Good morning, family, friends, believers, and unbelievers alike. The Lord has tasked me once again to bring the Sunday School for the week of April 24th, 2022. And our lesson is coming from 2 Corinthians, uh, first chapter, 1 through 11. And the title of our lesson today is God Comforts in trouble. So I'm going to say a quick prayer and then we can get into this lesson. Our Father and our God, our faithful God, thank you for your mercy and grace, God. Thank you for another opportunity to experience your glory this day, Lord. Lord, I pray, Father God, that you use me as a mouthpiece, Father God, to the glory, for to your glory, God. And I pray, Father God, that you may penetrate hearts father god and father god invade minds now that father god someone may come to you and say what must i do to be saved lord god and father god just believe lord god that jesus died for them and they shall be saved father god so bless your word as it goes out lord in your son jesus name we pray under your authority and power god amen so today's lesson um, how God, how God comforts us in trouble. So, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start it like this. Few questions. How do you respond to troubles in your life? Is your first response is your first response to worry, to become fearful, or perhaps lash out in anger? Do you exhaust all your practical options first, or? Do you begin by humbling yourself before the Lord in prayer? Now, to be quite uh, frank or truthful, um, this is um, uh, the story of many. Every, every time we get into trouble, our first option, I don't know, our first like inclination is not to turn to God. It's like try to fix it ourselves. So Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, greets the church in Corinth and us with grace, peace, and encouragement in our troubles. Okay, so when it says, when Paul introduces the, this um, introduces his letter, okay, this is a letter to the church of Corinth, um, Corinthians, First Corinthians, and Second Corinthians. It's a letter. To the church at Corinth. Um, first Corinthians was the first letter, and then Second Corinthians is the second letter. So when Paul um, introduces the letter, he you know he starts out by you know um, by letting the people, letting the Corinthians know once again that he is, or letting the readers know that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ. He's not boasting about his apostleship. But he's just reaffirm, reaffirming that the you know the message and lesson that comes from the teaching that comes from him is from Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ appointed him to uh, minister um, or spread the gospel to the Gentiles. That's the non-Jews. So he was just you know greeting the people, let them you know like the readers establish that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ. So everything that comes from him comes from God. So I'm going to do do, do it a little different. I'm not going to read the entire, um, you know, the entire uh, verses and entire. I'm going to do it as I do the breakdowns of the section. So I just went off the, you know, the protocol that has been established in the expository. Um, it's three sections. Um, that it broke down, it breaks it down. Uh, the first is encouragement. I Men, excuse me. The first is comfort. The second is uh, excuse me. Second is affliction, and the third is the last is deliverance. So, comfort covers um, verses one through seventeen. So, I'm gonna read verses one through. I'm excuse me. Verse one through seven. So I'm gonna read verse one through seven, and then I'm gonna. I'm going to expound on what the Lord gave me. So, 
um, verse 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, and from our brother, Timothy. I am writing to God's church in Corinth and to all of his holy people throughout Greece. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is, excuse me, God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When we are troubled, we are, excuse me, we will be able to give that same comfort God gave, uh, gives us, given, had given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort um, through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for our comfort and salvation. Excuse me. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same thing we suffer. Verse 7. We are confident that you, as you share in your suffering, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. So I'm going to give you a definition of comfort. Comfort. I, mean, I got this from my uh, the dictionary, uh, my Bible dictionary. Comfort. To encourage, help, and strengthen. So I'm going to read a verse from a familiar uh, book of the Bible, Psalm 23. I'm going to read verse four. Verse, 4. verse 4 reads, Even when I walk through the, val the darkest valley, valley, this is coming from the, the New Living Translation version. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close by, beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Many, peop uh, many people may think that when God comforts us, our troubles go away. And we know God is, you know, God's a sovereign God um, and a whole and an all-powerful God. So if he wanted to... Uh, get rid of our troubles, um, he could. So just, just throwing that out there, he could. But if that were always true, people would only turn to God out of, um, out of, um, desire, out of a desire to be relieved of their troubles and not out, and not out of love for him. So also we, and we ever probably heard in sermons or, you know, get counseled by uh, um, mentors. Or, and, they're, you know, they say, like, God is not a genie. So here is that God is not a God is not a cosmic genie. So God does not. Um, he supplies our needs. He does, he does not give us uh, everything that uh, we want. OK, because um, uh, Philippians 4 uh, chapter 4, verse 19 says this. Um, it tells us, um, And this same God who takes care of me will supply our needs for, um, from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. So, so God supplies our needs. He does not supply our wants. So people think that when we're, you know, when you get saved and when you're a Christian, that like we're not supposed to go through any trials or you know going through any like hardship or um, disasters, but or any storms. But we still live in a fallen world and we still live among wicked wickedness. So although we're set apart by God as His chosen, um, we're gonna go through rough things, but. The comfort is that God is with us while we're going through. The Holy Spirit is in us, which is God living in us while we're going through that storm um, of life. Um, we need to understand 
that by being comforted is an opportunity to receive strength, encouragement, and hope to deal with our troubles. So we should take when we go through hard things, you know, when God comforts us, we just should take it as an opportunity um, to receive God's strength to one, deal with what we're going through and then to be encouraged by the spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit that lives in and encourages us, you know, not to sit in that place where um, our trouble lies and um, just we have hope for our future because we have God and God, meaning Jesus Christ already overcome the world by his sacrifice on the cross. The more we suffer for Christ's sake, the more comfort God gives us. So remember, to count it all joy, every trial we endure for at the right time, um, they will equip you, equip us to comfort others uh, who are suffering similar um, troubles. So when we go through things, it's never um, for our, and it, and it's not always for our benefits, benefit. When we go through things in life and God comforts us in those things, it's an opportunity to, okay, it's like, okay, to learn a lesson, to see how, I mean, learn how good God is, uh, to trust him and depend on him, depend on him more. And also to you know, learn that lesson, like, okay, I've been through through, um, through this, so now I can help my, my fellow brother or sister that may go through the similar thing that I'm going through, and I can, you know, uh, encourage them, um, um, encourage them in the spirit to, you know, continue to put one step in front, one foot in front of the other, and just uh, take it a day by day, when they as they go through, you know, their trials, so they feel comfort comforted. And that wraps up the first section, which is comfort. Second section is affliction. It covers um, verse eight um, through nine. So I'm gonna read uh, those two verses. So verse eight, we think, we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. Um, we were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure. And we thought we would never, uh, would never live through it. Paul does not go into like detail about um, the overwhelming trouble that, uh, that he and his companion went through um, in Asia. We do know that it was severe because because he thought they would uh, die. So we know it was like something uh, 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 tragic, you know, it was what they went through was, had to be tragic because they thought they would never make it, they would, wouldn't make it through, or, uh, you know what I'm saying, it was gonna crush them um, and, they, and they're gonna, they, they would die. Why do we find it easy, talking about us now, bringing it back to modern times, why do we find it uh, easy to complain when life becomes difficult? And excuse, let me go back. Let me give you the, the definition of affliction. I'm sorry. Affliction. Once again, I got all these definitions from the, the Bible, um, from my uh, dictionary uh, Bible, my Bible dictionary, excuse me. So affliction, great suffering that produce sorrow. And the question I pose, I'm going to read it again. Why do we find it easy to complain when life becomes difficult? We say um, or think, why would a loving God allow allow all, all kinds of suffering in my life? And so Isaiah 40, 48, 10 answers. I have refined you, but not as silver. I have refined you, but not as silver is refined. Rather, I have refined you in the furnace of suffering. So, Isaiah just answered that right there, right? 
you we may ask why God make us go through trials and tribulations and you know, hard times and storms. Isaiah said it's God refining us. This verse shows us that God's testing is to refine us. Our respond, our response should be to turn to him in faith for uh, for strength to endure and rejoice. So we can we, we can rejoice when we go through afflictions. When we go through problems, we can rejoice because we know we have the hope um, living in us, the Holy Spirit. No, we have the hope of God living in in us because God, I mean, Jesus Christ already won the battle for us. So we know we have a bright future um, that we're um, striving towards. Um, So our response should be to turn to him for strength to endure and rejoice. For Romans 5, verse 3, 4, um, it says this. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident confident hope of salvation. So when we go through these things, it's okay to say, because um, we're supposed to, as representative representers of Christ, we're we're supposed to worship Him, worship Him in spirit and truth. Okay, so it's okay to go to God in, um, reverently uh, and say, "This what I'm going through, God. It sucks. I don't like it. Why do I have to go? Why do I have to go through um, um, such hard times. It's okay to go to reverently go to God and says this suck is we're supposed to go to God in spirit and truth. The truth we're supposed to be true um, to what we're feeling as human beings. And God is so compassionate and loving because Jesus Christ is God, was God in tangible uh, form here on earth as a man. So Jesus went through all these sufferings. He knows uh, what we go through. So we can be honest with him when we go through things that it's it sucks. God is I don't, I don't like it. Like Jesus himself, you know, I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase. You know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Easter just pa- Easter just passed. In the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, I'm just paraphrasing here. Okay, loosely paraphrasing. It's like Jesus said the same thing to God. When he prayed, when he ag- agonized in prayer by allowing the cup to pass, it's basically he was saying like, uh, "God, a Father, this is a uh, no, your son Jesus. Uh, I don't like this. I don't like that. I have to take on. I know we discussed this before I came um, to Earth, but at this moment, um, my human body is weak." And uh, uh, um, this is this this I don't like this right now. I, I, do I have to take this cup? Can you let this cup pass for me? But because Christ is uh connected to his Father, um, um, he, and, and you know a um, he's he worship worship and obeyed his Father in spirit and truth. So. He was like, not my will, Father, but yours be done. So I'm going to take on this affliction. So when we go through, said all that to say, when we grow, go through afflictions, when we go through our storms, we should count it as all, count, as, count it as all joy. We should praise God for keeping us because God don't, God don't have to keep us. That's what, um, that's what we, we miss that. We miss that God does not have to keep us when we go through uh, tough times or tragedies. Tragedies, he doesn't have to keep us. But we should give God praise and, and worship and give him glory for keeping us, not for us to lose our mind when stuff, when we go through a a devastating time, like, you know, Paul don't give him details, but we know it was severe because he thought they were, were going to die. 
but God kept him and Timothy this particular journey um I'm um, in Asia uh God kept them so just kind of us all joy um when God uh, refines us without the testing okay without God refining us without the testing we would never learn what we are capable of nor will we grow in our faith so it says endurance endurance develop strength and strength of character and strength of character you know so when we got refined us and we go through that pressure um it um develops our character our faith it develop it develops us um our our spirit man gets stronger um so without the testing we would never learn what we are capable of nor would we grow in our faith. Listen to me. If you are facing suffering, seek God and his refining work in your life. So seek God because we all go through um, trials. We all go through hard times in life. It doesn't matter if you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost or not. We all live on this fallen world with Satan roaming around, with the enemy just roaming around looking for who he can devour. We all live here, so we're going to go through tough times once, twice, three times, whatever, how many times in our life because we live in a fallen world. So all we, what we can do is, as believers, if you're a believer because uh, Paul here was talking to believers. He was talking to church, the church um, in Corinth. So he was speaking to believers. So as a believer, um, as we go through our trials, we, we should be in constant communication with God. Constant communication because God is the one that's keeping us as we go through that storm. So we should be in constant communication with our Father, with the one that can keep us, um, gives us joy and peace within us as we go through the storm. People might see us, and it looks like we're not going through anything, but internally we are battling internally. We're going through this hard thing, but God has given us peace. So the world at, I mean, uh, at large see us, they're like, oh, they're doing well, they're doing fine, but it does not know what we battle because <clears throat> God gives us inner strength. Actually, he strengthens us as he refines us. And that is uh, section two uh, for affliction. And remember, when we go through thing, things, it's like I said before, it's not for our gain. It's not always for our gain. It's to that we can comfort others. So when we go through these testing, we count it as all joy. When we go through what God takes us through, we just say, God, okay, God. We, we can say, yes, we can say, God, this sucks. This is, I don't like this. But we also can say, okay, God. I know this, I'm going through this thing. I know it's, it doesn't feel good, but not my will, but yours be done. If we're supposed to imitate Christ, we got to live uh, like, like the example he sets before us. And that is uh, section two, affliction. As we move to the last section, um, deliverance. So I'm going to read the, um, the verses, I'm discovering verse 10. And 11. So I'm going to read those verses. Verse 10. And we, and excuse me, and he did rescue us from mortal uh, danger. And he will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in him and he will continue to rescue us. 11. And you are helping us by praying for us. The many people, excuse me, then many people will give thanks before God as, as, excuse me. Then many people will give thanks bef because God has gr graciously answered so many prayers um, for our safety. Deliverance, the definition. To rescue, liberate, or, or redeem to turn over or give up to. 
deliverance. Deliverance came as a baby. Deliverance was born to Mary and Joseph. Deliverance was born in the town of Bethlehem in a stable, uh, not a fancy hospital, but a stable uh, with straw and animals around him. Deliverance walked this earth for 33 years. Deliverance healed the sick. Deliverance woke the dead. Deliverance, it, it, it cured the leper. He cured the blind man, the lame. Deliverance is the cross of Christ. Deliverance was betrayed. Deliverance was deserted. But deliverance was denied three times. Deliverance was paraded around after courtroom after courtroom, um, being beaten, tortured, humiliated, um, sped on, deliverance, carried the cross up the hill um, the Bible calls Golgotha or um, the skull. The hill was nailed, hands and feet. Deliverance died Friday. Deliverance was battling um, death on Saturday. Deliverance rose in victory on Sunday. And now because he um, deliverance rose, we live. We have freedom in Jesus Christ. Freedom is Jesus. Freedom is Jesus. Uh, excuse me. Deliverance is Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus came to rescue us. He liberated us from the penalty of sin, which is death. And he redeemed us back to our Heavenly Father. He turned us over from death. He turned us over from um, Satan's power. He turned us over and gave us up to God. He prayed. Deliverance prayed on the cross. It said, Lord, forgive them for they not they do not know what they're doing. Deliverance. Deliverance is Jesus. Jesus Christ delivered us from our, 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 our penalty to sin, which was death. And I'd like to close with this excerpt from the expository. I love how um, it was um, laid out. It says, no matter what kind of suffering you may have gone through, or may be going through right now. God, uh, God is actually building up your faith. So trust, trust God, trust him. God's actually building up your faith. He will see you through. If you've been delivered before, know that he will handle your, your current problems as well. Nothing is too hard for God. If God can create a whole universe, if he can create the earth in seven days, if he could put um, dirt together, created man and breathed into the nostrils of man, he can handle the problems we go through. So as believers, Paul is speaking to believers, as believers, we need to trust, trust our heavenly father that he can handle anything that comes against us. The Bible says no weapon, Form. No, no weapon may form um, against us. Um, paraphrasing uh, again, no weapon, no weapon that no weapon that form against us will ever prosper. So we should meditate on scripture. We should have scripture living in us. It should be a lifestyle. So when we go through go through problems, we can be comforted um, by Heavenly Father that Satan won't defeat us when we go through. Um, um, our problems because we have scripture. Jesus was afflicted. When he was baptized, he went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to fast and pray to his heavenly father. He was afflicted because 
And we know when we fast, we're hungry. Our body get weak. And the devil tried to come and try to defeat him. But Jesus Christ, because he knew the word of God. He was God. He knew he defeated um, he, he defeated Satan um, in the wilderness with the word of God. So we need the word living in us. We need God living in us as believers. So we need to meditate and be in constant prayer with God every day and as for non-believers if you don't know if you don't know God um, find a friend or a loved one or someone to tell you about this God and read for yourself so you will know this God and Jesus for your and know Jesus for yourself that he did die he died for the sins of the world and now we are delivered um, into eternity if we believe um, in him. So thank you for allowing me, uh, not allowing me, but allowing the Lord to use me as a mouthpiece, his mouthpiece. And love you. Peace.